Okay, this is part B. This is for computer geeks only. I'm gonna try to show you what these systems are all about. Okay, now here's the Arcadia 2001. Very sleek, very beautiful system here. Um, okay. Let's turn this over. A lot of these systems give very limited information. For example, it doesn't say, it doesn't say, uh, what, uh, you know, where this was released, what country it's for, whether it's PAL or NTSC. Joypad, here's a joypad right here. Of all these systems though, you know, the Atari 2600 was a lot more practical. The Atari 2600 didn't look as nice, but Users of the Atari 2600 will tell you that it, it was the, you know, spanning eight years, that was the system that uh, was so easy that a child could use it. Here's the ATF MP1. <coughs> Damn. Here's the APF MP1000. Son of a biscuit. There's the cartridge port. Here's the button. So here's a case where I would love to pause this, but because it's digital, it doesn't give me that option. Okay, let me turn this around. Here we are. Microcomputer. APF Electronics, made in Taiwan. Upside down for usage with adapter number 622T. Okay, now here's the Sega Mark III. Very nice design. This is the unit without joy pads. Uh, you may know that, that joy pads uh, can be attached to the side here, and it does make the system look a lot different. So but I'm showing you how, to, how a unit looks without the joy pads. Okay. Here's the back of the Sega Mark III. It's obviously all Japanese writing made in Japan. So assumably, this was released in Japan. There's the on-off bit uh, a button here. Here's the Infraton uh, VC4000. Obviously these come out. Here's the joy pad, I mean there's the uh, cartridge port. And there's no writing on back. Here's the side, the, I mean, the, the back, and here there's no writing underneath, I meant to say. Okay. 
Here's the Supercom Entertainment System 72. It's more or less a mimic of Nintendo. Turn this mess around. Model number NN4000, video computer system, 8-bit. Now here's the Bally's Arcade. Turn this around. It says Bally Arcade, model ADA 1000. Bally's. Obviously they made uh, uh, arcade games and uh, video games for Atari, so I believe, would they have the merger with Midway? I, or, uh, I believe that's true. You'll have to check me on that. That's the back of the system. Here's the Sports Center 4. Okay, you turn this around. This was released by Sears. Here's how it looks from the back. Here's the Atari XE. The cartridges were really easy to put in and out. But a lot of people complained because the joy pads were hard to put in and out. But they did make like four inch extenders that solved that problem. Here's the back. Here's the color game system. Nothing in back. There was something though. Here's in television, very heavy unit. Let's turn this around. Channel 4, Channel 3, Mattel Electronics, 1979. Okay. Here's Socrates. Okay, here's the keyboard. Nineteen eighty eight. Video technology. VTech. Let's 
let's turn this around. Here's how the VTEC Socrates operated. You can see that's the RF switch. And you can see there are no AV jacks. You know, I will tell you though, this had no static. I remember this unit. Copyright 1988. And sayonara. Okay, this is the uh, Atari stunt cycle. Um, another example of a classic mid-1970s game system that uh, whose looks exceeded its performance. You can see that it did not move sideways. It was just right there. That was all it was capable of. Like I said, it was not a high-tech system. So the four games were Stunt Cycle, Drag Race, Motocross, and Enduro. There. Nice collectors. Certainly not good for playing, of course, but... Now here is the Bally Astrocade. The Bally Arcade is the uh, more attractive white unit, I believe. So I, I've, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this came first and then they uh, changed it to the arcade. And I believe that the cartridges are the same. Uh, no inf information to verify that, but it, they look the same. The port looks uh, exactly the same. So I believe there is no difference in power, just looks. Have a really cool looking system. Computer perfection. Now this was this was like a handheld. Uh, not, sorry, not a handheld. This was sort of like a board game, and at this time they started taking board games and trying to go high tech with them. Sometimes I feel like this is something that could save you if you were in an African safari or something. You know, if you were in the middle of the jungle, you could just whip one of these things out. You know, if there were, like, natives trying to kill you, you could whip this gadget out, and they might think you have magical powers or something. Okay, enough of that garbage. I didn't quite say what I wanted to say. Sayonara. Okay, here's the back of the Intellivision system. It says Intellivision 3, made in USA, which is really good. Obviously this was uh, uh, late 80s, probably 88, 89, when all the big systems were basically uh, from Japan. Here's the Unisonic uh, Champion 2711. Okay. Speaker. Now this looks like um, a battery port, but I believe it's not. There it is. I, if I'm not mistaken, that just holds the uh, slack. Here's the Unisonic 2600. Uh, just a quick revision. Uh, there, these are the same exact de device, the Game Genie for Game Boy. You'll see that one is severed. 
because when Nintendo tried to invent new ways to stop the cheat device, we could still persist. So I do remember that in order to get it to work with a new model of uh, Game Boy, you had to actually go through all the work. You see this? So that big shell right there, you had to actually cut the whole thing off. So I do remember that.